Don't matter how you come in here, when you leave here, you steal one. When you sit down, you steal one. When you get up, you steal one. When you go to bed at night, you steal one. When you look in the mirror at yourself, you steal one. That's the story of OJ. Light-skinned, dark-skinned, you steal one. You're going to always be one when you walk up in here. And every day you wake up, don't you ever forget that. Hey folks, Dale Jackson here for Yellow Hammer Now. An embarrassing update from the Alabama legislature today. Wandalyn Gavan, a Democratic state representative from Birmingham, embarrassed herself, the chamber, the state of Alabama, and every woman legislator in the history of this country when she decided to take to the floor and declare that the lone black Republican member of the GOP is basically still just an N-word. That's the argument uh, being made. That is the level of discourse Wandelin Gavan has brought into the chamber, and she is seeking what I think is a Tennessee 3 moment where members of the legislature censure her or whatever the Alabama version of that is going to be and maybe even remove her from the chamber. She wants that moment. She wants that moment in the sun. She's probably not going to get it. She should. Uh, they should give in and give her exactly what she wants because what she did here is absolutely embarrassing. But you talked about a fundamental right. But as I've heard from several of my colleagues, it is amazing that we're here on this bill to speak about the fundamental right that you say that a parent has to parent and I'm still trying to figure out how we get here to this legislation, but yet we deprive and you deprive individuals time and time again that look like you of a fundamental right to vote every single time. Mm. I have a problem with that. Mm. I got a problem with that. People who died for the fundamental right to vote. Two weeks ago, the handicapped, the blind, the least of these came before a committee. Black folks, white and Republicans, for a fundamental right to vote. Denied. Not only denied, but they were denied by you. But yet, we are here today because of a personal situation that you've been fighting since I've been knowing you, before even before the legislature. But you would come here and inappropriately quote the Constitution and law. And stand here and do it in a way. And all I'm going to simply say to you, last time I saw you and I told you, before you come back in here and engage with me, I want you to pull up Jay-Z's song. And it's simply entitled, The Story of OJ. Anybody in here now, I want y'all to Google the story of OJ. It's a song. Because when you leave, came in here, you were one. And when you leave here, you're going to still be one. Now, I will take the entirety of her floor speech and put it at the end of this video. But before I do that, I just want to point something out here. This bill that's up before the legislature it is about parental rights. And this nonsense and garbage that Representative Gavan is saying about voting rights, well, it's nonsense and it's garbage. Nobody has had their right to vote taken away in the state of Alabama. Wanda Gavan, although she'll never be asked, could never point out a single instance of a vote being denied here in the state of Alabama in quite some time. And if she could, she would. But she's pretending that giving parents rights is bad 
because people's voting rights have been taken away, which isn't even true. She personally attacks State Representative Kenneth Pascal. Why? Because he's a Republican. The Republican from Pelham, again, is the lone black member uh, of the House GOP. And, and if the roles are reversed here, and this kind of stuff was said to her, the world would burn. But because we live in a world where Democrats can pretty much do whatever they want because damn Democrats got it good, it really doesn't matter what Wandling the Van does. She can talk things to death, and she has. She's good at her job. I, I know she sounds like an absolute fool, but you heard her. She's a licensed lawyer. She knows what she's doing here. It would be easy to dismiss her as a clown and an idiot for the way she talks, for the things she says, for how absolutely ignorant she behaves. But that would be a mistake. She is effective. They killed the bill that they were discussing because of stuff like this. And that's on Alabama Republicans. Chris Pringle, who was overseeing the chamber at the time, he could have stopped this and chose not to. Now, he can make that judgment call as to why he didn't do that. Fine. And the other Republicans in the chamber can make the call as to why they're not going to punish her for that. And that's fine. But this kind of behavior would never be tolerated by a Republican towards Gavan. Black, white, male, female would not matter. It would never be tolerated. And if she is not punished and she is not given the Tennessee three moment that she seeks so badly, it just goes to show that they are afraid. They are afraid of pushing conservative legislation. They are afraid of holding members accountable for the things they say and do. They are afraid. And until Republicans in this state are not afraid of their donors, of their opponents, of the media, we will not get real conservative legislation passed in this state that does good things for children and for the people of this state. This session, we have watched as tax cuts that were supposed to come have been smaller than they said. Rebates that were supposed to come are smaller than they say. School choice isn't even close to happening. Parental rights can't get done. Uh, A ban on ESG spending by the state of Alabama can't get done. But we can talk about, what, a $200 million state house? Okay, sure. If that's what you think voters voted for when they sent an overwhelming super majority back to the Alabama legislature, just keep doing what you want. Eventually, people are going to have enough of this. And I believe in the fundamental rights that are listed and noted in the Constitution of these United States of America. And as I state, every time I take this microphone, when I stand here, I stand for the people who duly elected me into office. And if I never get a bill out, I'm okay, I'll come back. But I'm blessed to be able to move legislation here and have been able to do so even through the harshest and hardest of times. But you talked about a fundamental right. But as I've heard from several of my colleagues, it is amazing that we're here on this bill to speak about the fundamental right that you say that a parent has to parent. And I'm still trying to figure out how we get here to this legislation, but yet we deprive and you deprive individuals time and time again that look like you of a fundamental right to vote every single time. Mm. I have a problem with that. Mm. I got a problem with that. People who died for the fundamental right to vote two weeks ago, the handicapped, the blind, The least of these came before a committee. 
black folks, white and Republicans, for a fundamental right to vote denied. Not only denied, but they were denied by you. But yet we are here today because of a personal situation that you've been fighting since I've been knowing you before, even before the legislature. But you would come here and inappropriately quote the Constitution and law. And stand here and do it in a way. And all I'm going to simply say to you, last time I saw you and I told you, before you come back in here and engage with me, I want you to pull up Jay-Z's song. And it's simply entitled, The Story of OJ. Anybody in here now, I want y'all to Google the story of OJ. It's a song. Because when you leave, came in here, you were one. And when you leave here, you're going to still be one. However you look at it and however you choose it. But a fundamental right today should be given to all people. Not because we're here today because of a situation that occurred between a marriage that went bad. A fundamental right should be owed to a person who is blind and cannot see and simply wants to be able to, to, to simply vote. A fundamental right should be given to that person who shouldn't have to take $56 out of his pocket to pay for an Uber to take him to the polls to vote. That's the purpose of a fundamental right. The story of OJ. And I'm unapologetic in here today for anything that I may say. But I get a, I have a problem when you come here talking about a fundamental right. When all you do is take away and attempt to strip away the rights of those who so, de so de much depend on us coming here today. And all of those people who died and bled for you to even be in here, to stand here in this well today. Whether it be in the party you're in or any other party. Okay. And as my good friend who just left here said, you're no better than your last performance. A fundamental right. Uh, uh, I'm going to reclaim every bit of uh, my time. Uh, Mr. Mr. And it Jeremy. is germane to this bill because I'm talking about a fundamental right and I haven't stepped not outside not one boundary. I'm talking about fundamental rights. You started talking about the Constitution. I'm talking about a fundamental right. And the last time I checked the Alabama State Bar license, Me every year, October 1 through October 1, to practice law here in good standing. And the last I checked, I was licensed this past October, and I just believe today was what? May 2nd, 2023. Fundamental right. Talking about liberty in the bill, a fundamental right. To deny one person, but yet you look for someone to give you every right for custody, control, the right to upbring your child, the right to participate in the education of your child, the right to, to, to be considered a fit parent, the right to be able to direct in all of the care of your child and upbringing. A fundamental right. Well, the last time I checked here again, the fundamental right to vote was still a part of these issues that we deal with every day. The fundamental right to free speech. A fundamental right to a trial by jury. The protection against self-incrimination. The protection against unreasonable seizures. The protection against... Mm -hmm. 
That is what we come here and we fight for every day in this house. Those are the fundamental rights that I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about the fundamental rights that are also noted, that are listed. Marriage, privacy, tra travel, contraception. Again, I leave this, this day as without having to say anything. When Jay-Z penned that song, he penned that song for a time such as this. Mm -hmm. You want me to sing it? Because I, you know, I don't have a problem with it. I can stand by anything I say. But I think it's enough people in here today that Googled it. If Mike Kaysen in here, Mike, I hope you get the sound bite off of it. The story of OJ. Still one. Still one. Still one. Don't matter how you come in here, when you leave here, you still one. When you sit down, you still one. When you get up, you still one. When you go to bed at night, you still one. When you look in the mirror at yourself, you still one. That's the story of OJ. Light-skinned, dark-skinned, you still one. You're going to always be one when you walk up in here. And every day you wake up, don't you ever forget that. 